Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and... Welcome to episode 160, figure out the other number yourself, of the Spear Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Sitting here in the warehouse, I'm cold as fuck. Just going to change this little angle here. There we go. Uh, sitting here in the warehouse. Uh, it's a Monday night. I know. Get a new joke. Uh, I know the easy solution is for me to just be on time every week, but when, when who said this was going to come out every Sunday? Me. I did, and I fucking deserve everything you give me. So sorry. But, um, I don't know, I just got back from Gold Coast and shit's been very hectic because uh, the tour pre-sale opens this Wednesday. So, the brand new tour, I'm going all across Australia, biggest one I've ever done. I'm doing a bunch of new cities I've never been to before. I'm doing the biggest shows I've ever done in my life, especially Brisbane is huge. It's going to be fucking giant. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's got all going on pre-sale on Wednesday, which is two days from now. So make sure you are on lewspears.com slash gig list. Go there, put your email in your city in there. Don't worry. I don't fucking spam you cunts. I haven't sent an email on there for like a year. I think it's, I think since, I think the last email I sent was my previous fucking pre-sale. I don't use it to advertise shit. I just use it for, you guys have signed up because you want to know when the fuck I'm doing shows. So that's the only time I'm going to email you when I'm doing a fucking stand-up thing, right? Because how, the way social media is going, you cunts don't see my fucking post. No one sees my fucking, I got 300,000 subscribers on YouTube and fucking about two of them get a notification when I put out a video, even though they hit subscribe. Um, so the, at the rate fucking social media, Facebook and all these algorithm cunts are going, the only way to actually tell you book guys when I'm doing a show is with a fucking email. Um, so I'm not going to abuse you by, uh, sending you 30 of those every fucking day. You ever sign up to a mailing list of like a thing that you like or a person you like and they're like, Hey, thanks for signing up to my mailing list. Here's, uh, three emails a day and we're going to email you once a week with a starting kit and tips on how to... It's like, bro, if I wanted tips on how to use your fucking shit, I'll Google it. That's not why I sign up to your email list. All right, shush. Imagine that. If you sign up to my fucking gig list and you got an email every day going... Here are the, the <laughs> here are the best tips and and practices for buying tickets to Lewis Spears' show. Step one, the most popular method is by going on his website. But if you want to get fancy, you can call the venue and get him that way. All right, I'll stay tuned for part two of this eight week program where I email you fucking bullshit you don't need. Email two would just be like, oh. Here's what you should wear to all, <laughs> to all of Lewis's shows. No, okay? You get one fucking email, you get one fucking chance, and if you miss out on the pre-sale tickets, hey, it's your own fault. Um, but seriously, though, I do recommend jumping on that because uh, even though this is the biggest tour I've ever done, there are, uh, I've like doubled my online audience since we booked it all, more than that, especially on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, and there are three times as many people on the gig list than there are tickets available. So to put that in perspective, if one third of the fucking gig list people buy tickets, every ticket is sold, okay? So I would recommend not only getting on the gig list, but when you get that fucking email on Wednesday, buy them because... If only a third of you do, the other two thirds miss out before it even goes on general sale. So I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just saying you may miss out if you don't. All right. So with that out of the way, I'm fucking had a great time in Gold Coast, man. I did some of the best gigs of my life. No, well, the best gigs of my life that were, weren't my shows. My shows are always the best, but like in ter like performing to strangers who don't know who I am, I feel like that is the ultimate test of any comedian's material. And I'm right. I'm I, I'm at like the with most of my bits. I'm at the like the ninety percent complete part before the tour, which will start in September. So I have got like what is that two two months or so? It's July, July, August. Yeah, about two months until it starts kicking off. Three months until the big big shows. So. Uh, I'd say, yeah, most of my stuff's about 90% done. And fuck, 
I had some of the best gigs ever in Gold Coast, uh, so, which means, which is really good. It's a really good indicator that the material's strong, the material is good, because if people who have no idea who I am are loving it, that means that you cunts are going to like it even more, because that's just how it works. Um, for, bro, I had, I had the fucking... What was it? On Friday, I had the best gig I've had all year, and then... Uh, the wor- the shittest thing happened straight after, right? Well, it wasn't too shit, but it was just like, it's kind of shit that if I, if I did that to some, what, ha- what someone did to me, if I did to them, I would be in jail. That's what fucking happened, right? So I'm doing this, uh, doing this room in the city that I do pretty often. Uh, great room, and it was an electric night. Chris Wainhouse was headlining. He fucking killed it. One of my favorite comics. Uh, every, everyone, everyone on that night, killed it i went up and i did the fucking the best set i've done all year right and it was like wasn't close it was like far and away like fucking incredible set okay i've got this new bit i'm not gonna ruin it's in the show but i got this new bit about byron bay and just the whole thing about that hippie town and just ranting about it and it fucking smashed i don't know why i think it was a bit of a bit of me a bit of the crowd whatever reason it was it fucking destroyed right best set i've ever done at that room even the guy who runs it was like holy fuck when did you get that good and i got off and i was like i'm not sure and i don't think i can do that again (laughs) but we'll see maybe i've improved maybe i've fluked it we don't know until the next time right amazing set get off stage i had to finish my set early because anyway i'll stop sucking my own dick stop tooting my own horn uh Anyway, um, that wasn't that funny as, as I gave it. Fuck, I can't even speak. That was so funny, I can't speak English. Anyway, so uh, I finished my set and uh, get off stage and then Chris Wayne goes up. He fucking crushes as well and then the whole night finishes. And then the crowd comes out and, you know, as you do, you hang around, you know, hey, thanks for coming, this, that. My girlfriend was there. She was hanging out in the, in the comics only area and I'm hanging out in the bar, you know, just mingling with the people and getting feedback on my set because I need it to be ready for you cunts on tour, right? So uh, I'm hanging out after the show, talking to people and this, uh, this woman comes up to me. Actually, you know what I'll do? Okay, I'll play, I'll play some audio from it. It'll be fuck around to edit in, but I'll play some audio from it, okay? Uh, this woman, during my set, heckles me, right? Yells some shit out. She's an Irish woman. She's drunk as fuck, and she yells some shit out uh, during my set. And this is what happened. Even though they're exactly the same as each other. <laughs> it's like that walks. place. Hey? Walks. What? Are they not called walks? I don't know what you're saying, bro. <laughs> She's coming from Byron Bay, she's out of her fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can smell your armpits from here, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> we're back see i gave her a little one two you know i gave her the one hey please be quiet she didn't be quiet i gave her the i can smell your armpits from here shut the fuck up you know i gave her the one two she she got one chance and then i fucking destroyed her soul okay fair trade she shut up after that lovely it was funny we all had a laugh whatever didn't think anything of it show ends talking to all the people oh you were good hey thanks for coming this that Woman comes up to me, and uh, because the, because of the lights, especially at that room, couldn't see anyone, don't recognize the woman. She comes up, she's real drunk, I immediately recognize her drunken slurring as the girl that yells out. I'm like, oh fuck, here we go. This is gonna be, this is gonna be the, um, I really liked your set, but I think the thing that you said about me was unacceptable. I, it, 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 it. I laughed about all of your other stuff, but there was one thing that offended me, and so that means that it's not okay. And even though everyone else laughed, that means that you're not a bad, you're, you're a bad comedian. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Twitter and I'm gonna write, I just saw Lewis Spears, the, and then I'm gonna put comedian in quotation marks, the comedian, because just because I didn't laugh, that means that you're not a comedian anymore. Just like when I go to a fucking, I go to, 
I go to a restaurant and I don't like the food, that means I can go chef and that means that he's not a chef anymore. Chef, shut up, bitch. So I'm so, anyway, I'm expecting that to happen, right? I'm expecting to get that. She comes up to me and she goes, oh my God, you are so tall. Because I was doing a bit about being tall. And I'm like, hey, and she goes, I loved you. You are so funny. I loved your set. You were so good. And I was like, thank you. And then she gets a little bit closer to me. So I'm like, whatever. She's a little bit drunk. I step a little bit back. Then she steps a little bit closer to me. And I step a little bit back. And she steps a little bit closer to me. And then I step a little bit. But oh, I'm up against the wall. Can't move. Right? And she's just fucking going out. She's like, oh my God. You're so funny. Real drunk. Right? And then she starts fucking grabbing me. And initially I thought... She was trying to bring me closer to her level, as drunk people sometimes do, to like say something and go, Hey man, you can't fuck it. Like you can't hear them. You know what I mean? When you're at a nightclub and someone pulls your head in and there's fucking club music going and they've had like six pills so they can't speak English and they pull your head in and they just go, Hey man, you guys fucking girls and drugs, pingers, and kebab. And you're like, Oh yeah, man. And then they go, fucking sick cunt. And then start fist bumping. And then you, you start fist bumping too, even though you don't know what they said. And that's just how it works. That's what I thought was going to happen, right? So she fucking, she, <laughs> she, she starts pulling me in. I'm like, okay. She goes, she, <laughs> she goes, you're really hot. I was like, thank you. Hands up. Cause I'm like, I'm not touching this bitch. Hand, I was I'm doing the fucking hands up. Don't shoot shit. Cause I don't need this, right? My girl's in the VIP room. There's a fucking, there's no door on there. I can see her. I know she can see me. And then her girlfriend, the girl, sorry, brings over her, this other guy, huge cunt, like 6'4", so not as big as me, but, you know, huge. And she goes, hey, this is my boyfriend. And he's not as drunk as her. And he goes, uh, he was Irish, too. He goes, yeah, how are you going, mate? I really liked your set. And I was like, oh, thank you. And he goes, no worries, no worries, you're a bloody champion. Keep it up. And I was like, oh, thank you. Really nice dude. Not as drunk as, as his girlfriend, right? And I'm like, I'm keeping what she said to me a secret. Don't need to ruin whatever's going on there because he also has neck tattoos, so I don't need to ruin my face either. And then fucking... <laughs> and then he goes to leave and then she pulls me down again to say something. So I thought, right? And then she pulls me down and I'm like, I give her my ear. Because, you know, there's when someone pulls you down... You can give them three things, right? You give them your face, if you trust them, because you want to make eye contact. You give them your cheek, in case they want to kiss it, right? If you trust them. And if you fucking hate that cunt, you give them the back of your head. You know when you do that? <laughs> I know I know. girls do that shit all the time. When you fucking hate some cunt and you think he's going to try and either kiss you on the cheek way too close to your lips or try and kiss you on the face if you make eye contact... So you give him the old fucking three quarter, like you do the exorcist. You lean in and you just fucking turn all the way around. <laughs> you give him one of them, like the fucking, the fucking twist. You give him the old scoliosis fuck off. That one, I gave her that, right? The scoliosis special. Leaned in, turned my head all the way around. And then she puts her hand on the top of my head and twists it. And it fucking hurts. And then I'm like, okay, she wants to kiss my cheek. If that's what's going to get her to go away, whatever. So I give her that. And then she, she tries to fucking go around for the mouth three times. My girlfriend's watching this shit happen. And my back is to my girlfriend. So I'm thinking, for, for fuck's sake, she can't see how much I'm struggling. All she can see from her point of view is just me making out with a random drunk girl for fun in front of her. Because I had a good set. And I'm like, yeah, I deserve this. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah. I did I did good jokes for 10 minutes. Time to cheat on my girlfriend in front of her. Like, that's how I celebrate. <laughs> like, that's why, that's why you can't come to my shows, babe. Because that's how I celebrate. Anyway, so the, this fucking girl's trying to pash me. I'm trying to, like, get my, get a fuck away from her. I'm against the wall. I'm stuck between this fucking, I'm stuck between fucking female Harvey Weinstein the wall, and then my girlfriend, right? And I'm just going, what's going on? Tried to pull away from her. Eventually, she gets the hint, and I just walk away feeling fucking violated. 
I was like, holy shit. If I did that to a girl, I would be bashed. I was waiting to get punched in the head by her boyfriend. And then she goes off, and, and this was all in front of her boyfriend. And he just fucking takes her and walks away, clearly disappointed. And she, she just walks away going, kebabs. Don't think she'll even fucking remember me. And then I go, I go backstage to the VIP room thinking my girlfriend's going to crack it at me in front of everyone. Thankfully, she saw the whole thing and she's like, geez, that was crazy. I was like, why did you help me? <laughs> he saw that shit happening. You didn't help at all. She's like, eh, you look like you had a handle on it. I'm like, I fucking didn't. I did not. She's like, hey, I thought it was funny. I'm like, that I understand. Because <laughs> I've seen that happen to Luke and it's very funny. It's like people fucking act like there's no female creeps, bro. Yes, there are. I've experienced this so much. I've had my ass grabbed in nightclubs and everyone looks at the girl doing it. One time I was in, I can't remember, it was like Melbourne, right? And this isn't tickets on me, right? She walks through the fucking nightclub and she grabs both hands, my ass, mate's ass, and then a stranger's ass, like five male asses, and then just fucking dances out of the thing like it was a dare or something. She was just drunk. And all of the guys just look at each other like, who the fuck was that bitch? And then we all just continue dancing. If I did that, at cloud nine, I wouldn't have any teeth left. If I went to the middle of a fucking dance floor and just grabbed five chicks double-handed on the ass and then fist bumped out of there, I would be stomped 2D by the security guards and every guy in there. No amount of pingers could energize me enough to stand up against the barrage that would follow. It's like, oh, fucking... All, all men, all men are fucking toxic masculinity, fucking sexual harassment, fucking acting like chicks don't do that shit too. Yes, they do. Witnessed it. Um, but that being said, I, I don't, I'm not going to cry about it. I didn't give a fuck. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> so maybe that's the difference. End of the day, guys care less about that shit. Girls care more. So maybe that's a problem we should start fixing. Uh, but then, oh, a funny thing was, I walked into the VIP room and I thought all the comics saw that. But it was only my girl that saw it. They were all talking to each other. So I came back into the room and I was like, oh, fuck, did you see me? I just got me too'd out there. And they all freaked out <laughs> and thought I was saying, oh, guys, did you see out there? Some girl accused me of trying to rape her. <laughs> they thought I was saying that. I was like, no, 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 no. I was the victim in this scenario. And they were like, oh, okay. It's like, fuck off. What, you think I'm not hot enough to get Me too To be on the receiving end of the Me Too? Is it a Me Too if that bitch didn't have a movie role? Let's be honest. If that chick was a fucking Disney exec, I'd let her fiddle with my nuts. You know? If I, if I could get, honestly, bro, honestly, if I could get six million dollars to be the next Prince Charming, like the world's longest Prince Charming, I'd, I'd let fucking some female exec give me a fondle for sure. To be the next Prince Charming, just to see on fucking Twitter, that Twitter moment. <laughs> Groundbreaking news for representation. Disney, Disney announces world's longest Prince Charming. And all these fucking long counts will be like, finally, a prince we can relate to. And all these other people will be like, no, Prince Charming is supposed to be six foot one, not six foot eight. This is height appropriation. You see all that shit our fucking cunts are angry about um, having a black Ariel, the black My Little Mermaid. Bro, if you give a fuck about what colour the littlest mermaid is, your life sucks. Watch the cartoon. Oh, no, it needs to be exactly the same as the fucking cartoon. Well, then watch the cartoon if that's what you want. 
Bro, you gotta understand that we are living in an era of fucking movie remakes. It's like it's like the dark ages of original movies. I'm talking like stuff that actually gets a budget. Of course, there's heaps of indie movies and shit. But if you're talking like shit that companies will actually put money into, it's only remakes. Toy Story 4, uh, you know they've already scripted and planned out toy, up to Toy Story fucking 8. They're making a Lion King, remaking it, calling it live action, even though it's computer generated. That's not live action, that's animated, bro. That's animated, not live action. Dumb cunts. And now people are fucking angry because, oh, they made the fucking mermaid bitch black. Dude, we made Jesus white. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that's if, if you want to talk about that, let's talk about that. We turned Jesus, a dude who lived in the fucking desert in the Middle East, we turned him white. Let them have Ariel. That's a fair trade. I think we come be- come off first in that fucking transaction. We made Jesus waste. We took a guy that lived for his whole family lived for generations in the fucking desert. And we're like, oh, yeah, but he was white and had blue eyes. <laughs> like, everyone else was, you know, those, those yucky brown people. But Jesus, he was white. Bro, let him have the fucking Little Mermaid. Who cares? Ugh. The mermaid's the wrong color. It's like, yeah, dude, she's also not half fish. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know. You know what the real, the real issue should be is why the fuck are they making a Little Mermaid at all? It's been done. I don't know. I'm just sick of like remakes and shit and sequels from like old franchises. Like, I'm really angry that every single person in my life has told me that Toy Story 4 was incredible because I really, really wanted it to be bad just so they would stop doing these things. But now every single person in my life and everyone online has told me that it's the best Toy Story ever and it shits me because that just means there's going to be a Monster Inc. There's going to be an Incredibles. There's going to be this and that up to fucking... Like, we're actually going to get to tens. I mean, Marvel's already done that shit. But I think Marvel is a little bit different because they're like building a cinematic universe. They're almost doing a fucking TV series. I feel like that's a little bit different because they're like world building and comic books. The format of comic books has always been that of like multiple individual character storylines and then every couple of years a big crossover event. So that's like fucking really organic and I feel like that works and makes sense. But it's like all of these fucking movies that were never really supposed to have sequels. They're making them like when they came up with Toy Story did they do you reckon they really planned to do fucking four of them nah no they didn't they were like oh let's give this a go now they gotta shoehorn it in but even the sequels is like I don't mind the sequels I feel like the remakes is what annoys me Especially when they remake shit that doesn't really need a remake. So I understand remaking an old live action movie, right? Like Judge Dredd, yeah? Like a sci-fi thing. They're like, oh, the Judge Dredd was really good. Or Terminator is another good example, right? Judge Dredd, Terminator, like those were fucking awesome movies. But imagine if we made them today with all of the special effects and all the sci-fi shit we can now do. That makes sense, right? I get that. Or making a, remaking a really old movie, like something that was made in the fucking 40s, has an incredible storyline, but I don't know, maybe it was in black and white or, or whatever the fuck. Let's do it again with all the modern technology. I get that. But remaking like an animated movie, like My Little Mermaid or The Lion King, like they just don't need remakes, do you know what I mean? Like they just... And it's so weird that they, if they are rem or Aladdin is another example, they're remaking them, but they're not changing a single thing. They're just doing the script again to make more money without having to spend money on script writers and this and that and, and IP and copyright and going through all of that kind of bullshit. That's the only reason they're doing it is because all of the startup costs are eliminated because they own everything and the writers are all paid. They just got to do it again 
in a different format. I feel like that's just a little bit soulless, I guess, in what is supposed to be an art form, but like everything gets ruined by corporate money. Oh, boo! People are making money out of movies. Oh, movies are supposed to be an integral, heartwarming performance and an experience for people, and it's an art form. Where's the integrity? Beep, 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 beep. That's what I sound like right now. But you know what? Can't help but feel it. I feel like we're in a dark age of original movies. Because every single time a sequel or something gets turned into a franchise gets made, that is one less big budget original movie. Because those are too risky, right? Boo, creative art forms need risk. And innovation and creativity. That's why we're all here on this planet to make things and blah, blah. All the fucking tradies listening to this building house is just going, shut up, cunt, let me watch Lion King in peace. I don't know. <clears throat> um, I don't know how long we're going for, probably like half an hour, because I paused it because I wanted to put in that fucking heckler thing. Oh, that's going to be a bitch to edit in. What else I want to talk about? Written on me fucking whiteboard here. Pre-sale, done that. Uh, the Irish chick, me too, done that. Uh, oh, I have a huge announcement coming soon. I know this week feels like it's the fucking week of announcements, but everything's like... Let me have a look at my schedule here. So... Wednesday, pre-sale opens, and then the week after that, what's that? Next week. Next, what day am I doing that? Next tu Tuesday, is that what it is? Yeah, sorry, I'm looking at my fucking Tuesday. I could just turn it around and show you, but that would ruin the surprise. Choose next, uh, <laughs> next Tuesday, not tomorrow, next Tuesday, um, I've got a very, very big announcement, something that uh, I and many other people have been working on, purchasing gear. I think you've seen me been buying all of this shit and setting it up and building something in the warehouse. We're building an entire big set uh, with the most equipment and the highest quality stuff I've ever bought in my life. Some of it I'm staring at and I don't know how it works yet, uh, but we're working on it uh, because we... Uh, coming forward with a big, big new project that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, and it's being announced next Tuesday, tomorrow. I'm meeting up with a few people and we're filming uh, the trailer for it, which I think comes out Thursday. Oh, so the trailer. All right, so I'm announcing it on Thursday, actually. Sick. So that's a couple of days from now. So Thursday, you're going to find out what I've been working on for... Fuck, I'd say we'd be working on this since... Jeez, it'd be like the start of the year. So like six months we've been building this thing behind the scenes and working on it, keeping it a big secret. The people in Patreon have, have kind of figured it out because I've been giving them hints in the secret uh, project uh, group chat thing. So that's cool. Um, but I think uh, everyone else is going to be incredibly surprised and happy that we are doing this because it's a huge big project. We spent a fuckload of money on it and I'm super excited about it and I know it's going to be amazing. So on Thursday, what I need you, so here's what I need. This, this is your task for the week. Wednesday, you better grab those fucking tickets. Thursday, you don't have to spend any money. Easy, right? Thursday, I need you guys to share the trailer. Share, like, whether it's tagging a mate or sharing the link in a group chat or sharing it on Facebook, retweeting on Twitter, whatever the fuck it is. I need you guys to tag your mates, like this shit, and, I don't know, comment. You know what the algorithm wants? Because we're trying to make uh, a lot of noise with this trailer because it is dropping on uh, Thursday and it's going to be fucking good. I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you. Um, you're going to love it. That's all i got to say. On Thursday, something very, very big is coming. There... Ah, you'll see. You'll see. It's going to be great. I'm very excited for it. What else do I have here? So, we've got the fucking pre-sound. Okay, after that, we have uh, some not very good news. Something that I'm actually quite bummed about. Um, so, as you know, uh, my friend Greeley got out of prison recently, which is amazing. Uh, however, you may not know this, uh, if you only follow me, uh, he, the, the prosecution appealed his sentence. And uh, he got 12 months suspended, which is fucked. Um, so he's back in Risden Prison, 
And if you would like to send him a letter, uh, I'm going to leave the address in the, the YouTube comments. Yeah, I'll leave the address in the YouTube comments and I'll also put it on the Speared Sunday's Instagram if you want to send him a letter because he's going to be doing a lot more time. He didn't do anything else. He didn't re-offend. It's just he served his time and the prosecution decided that that wasn't enough time. So they appealed the sentence and argued that his sentence wasn't harsh enough. So basically they're dog cunts and they sent him to do extra time for little to no reason because they did. Um, and it's, it sucks. And uh, it, it now looks like, it now looks uncertain whether or not he'll be able to open for my tour or not. So we're tr we're got, we're, I'm praying that that will be able to happen. And I'm praying that he's okay and hoping he's all right. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm going to fly over to Tassie and visit him in person. Uh, and I've been writing him some letters as well. And I sure, I'm sure he would appreciate letters from you. So, look, I don't want to fuck this up. Um, so the, I'm not going to read out where to send letters. But I am going to read out uh, what I was told about his... Because I haven't spoken to him. So... Where are we? I'm just trying to find the fucking message that I was told about his sentence. Because 12 months suspended does not mean he's doing a year in prison. Uh, it means that he will get out on parole at some point. I think there's a, there's a mandatory amount of time that he has to serve. Uh, and then after that, he's on parole for the, the, the rest of the sentence. I believe, I don't know, I've never fucking gone to prison or had a friend in prison before, so I don't properly understand it. I'm just pulling this shit up so I can tell you guys what actually <clears throat> has gone down. Um, where are we? Uh, fuck, I can't find it. Um... Yeah, look, I will probably tell you guys next week when I find out properly. Uh, definitely should have fucking looked this up before. But I didn't. Um, no. Nah. All right, I'll tell you guys later, I guess. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm bummed about it, but that's all right. We're gonna hold a fucking positive attitude for my bro Grills while he does his time, and uh, hopefully he'll get out sooner than we think. Uh, so if you want to send him a letter, please do check out the uh, the comment section of this podcast, whether it's on Instagram or on YouTube. You will be able to. You know what? I can fucking find this shit. It's in my messages on Facebook. I'm gonna fucking find it. Where are we? Uh, uh, uh. Ah, I think I'm in the right spot now. If this doesn't work, I'm giving up. Ah, okay. Here's the, uh, the fucking P.O. Box. P.O. Box 24, Linders Farn, Tasmania, 7015. That is L-I-N-D-I-S-F-A-R-N-E, Tasmania, 7015, P.O. Box 24. Okay. So, all right. This is the actual sentence. This is what I got told. They locked Grilly back up today. They gave him two years, 12 months suspended, eligible for parole in four months. So from what I understand, he will do four months of which he's already served one because I was told this in June. It is now July. So he's got three months left. So after that point, he is eligible for parole. And then if he is approved, he gets out. If he's approved... And then he has to send, he has to serve up to 12 months. And then if he behaves and he doesn't reoffend or this and that, they may take away the other year that he has to do. If not, they keep reviewing it up until the two years. And if he doesn't get approved to have it wiped, he does the full two years outside of jail as long as he doesn't reoffend. And then he's. Sweet, he served it. But 
Uh, it all depends on them. So it's uh, it's a fucking bummer that uh, I don't know. Just seems it just seems to me a little bit malicious to do to someone who's such a positive force on the world for a dumb fucking fight. But that's the world. Don't punch people. Unfortunately, you can't do that kind of shit. Because uh, even if the other cunt started it, sometimes you just get fucked. Um, so that's that sucks, but we're, send him a letter. P.O. Box 24, Linders Farm, Tasmania, 7015. Address it to Andrew Greeley. G-R-E-E-L-E-Y, Andrew. Uh, he would appreciate that, I'm sure. All right, so with that, said uh shall we get into something even worse which is miscellaneous bit at the end um and of course if he gets out uh i'll have him on the on my tour but it all depends on if he's approved and this and that and his parole conditions because sometimes when you get out you can't go in licensed venues which would be this and that so basically i'm not really going to know until he's out which is not for three months from now so july August, September. So he would, even if he gets out, he would miss all of the shows in September, and which is, I don't think there's many. Most of the tours in October, November. But I will let you know, <coughs> and uh, I will of course have him if possible. Uh, where are we? So if you would like to send uh, an email to the podcast, if you need some life advice, if you need a question answered, if you have just a funny fuck story that you would like to tell me, please send it to podcast at Um I Just a quick little update from last week. Uh, the, the guy with the girlfriend who started an open relationship without asking him, uh, he broke up with her uh, and he's no longer friends with the guy she fucked. So that sucks for him but it'll end up being a good thing. All right. Okay, where... Uh, <laughs> okay. My... this I haven't read this one, so I hope this is good. My best... But it seems good. We've got, we've got this email, and I like the subject line. My best friend, 16, fucked my stepmom, 43. <laughs> that is a fucking boss move. Before you complain, the age of consent in Australia is 16. All right, so I'm calling this a certified alpha energy move. But I haven't read the email, so it could also be a certified statutory rape <laughs> charge. Um, hey, Lewis, I love your work, and I thought I would share this story with you. Uh, and your podcast listeners. The person emailing me this is a girl, so I assume my best friend, I assume it was a lesbian thing? I oh, know. Let's find out. This one's a bit long, so hopefully I don't bore you. Judging by your subject line, I think we'll be okay. Um, where are we? Oh, fucking hell. My name is Sarah. Um, Please call me Sarah because I have a few friends who listen to the podcast religiously, praise be at Sundays, and if they find out what happened, I may just have to kill myself or move to the North Pole, whichever works best. Well, don't do that, Sarah. Um, anyway, to set the scene, I'm 15 and my best friend is 16. We've known each other for longer than I can remember. Jeez, I think that might be a condition. <laughs> If, if you made friends with someone in school and you can't remember where you met them and you're only, only 15, you might have a brain hemorrhage. My parents divorced when I was 11 after my mum... Well, you can remember that. After my mum wanted a change of scenery. Why didn't she just get some fucking pants? Plants. Pants? Plants. My parents divorced when I was 11 after my mum wanted a change of scenery and fucked off with her 19-year-old boyfriend and my dad remarried two years later. Fuck, that's brutal. Because if she was... You were 11, was it four years ago? She would have been like 30-something. 30 38. Fucked off with a 19-year-old boyfriend. I mean, at least your mum's killing it. <laughs> I hope your dad's uh, fucking someone who's at least 18 and one day just to get back at her. My stepmom and I never had a good relationship. Uh, oh, my dad remarried. My stepmom and I... Oh, I guess he didn't find someone good, clearly. My stepmom and I had a good relationship. Never had a good relationship. I can't read. I'm fucking disabled today. My stepmom and I never had a good relationship purely because she was set on driving a wedge between my dad and I and making herself the number one priority. Yuck. Don't marry someone with kids then, idiot. 
She would often get me in trouble for things I did not do and once threatened to put me in foster care or juvie, an odd combination. About five months ago, my best friend had been acting really weird and I mean calling me just so he could check if my stepmom was over. If she was, he would invite himself over and if not, he would hang up. I thought nothing of it because then I was a naive bitch who didn't know anything. Yeah, very fucking sus. I mean, why didn't he just get her number if he was trying to root her? My stepmom had also been acting strange, lashing out at my dad for no real reason and constantly offering to drop me off at school where she would hold a 10-minute conversation with my friend and leave me standing there awkwardly. Okay, I don't like this stepmom anymore because this is some, like, pedo grooming behavior. Fast forward two months, I've become extremely aware that my friend has a huge crush on my stepmom, but I decided not to bring it up for all our sakes, and I thought it was just an innocent crush. Yeah, I mean, that'll happen if you have a hot mum. Sure, whatever. I'm with you on this. I agree with your behavior. <coughs> One night, I came home from being an- at another... Ha- I came home from being at another friend's house to a seemingly empty house. As I walked into my dad's room to check if he was home, I walked in on on my best friend railing my stepmom from behind while she was calling him daddy. (laughs) What, is she getting a fucking time machine? Dude, okay, you can't do the daddy thing unless they're older than you, right? Because the cunt's 16. Like... That would only happen in a fucking time warp, all right? He should be calling her mum. That's crazy. Uh, I have no idea... I had no idea what to do or say, and honestly, I just felt like I was going to throw up. After about a few seconds, my friend pulled out of the bitch and immediately jumped up when he noticed me reacting in the most cliche way and covering both of them up while saying, what are you doing here? Can't I live here. How about that, dickhead? I couldn't help but laugh at the situation, but also cringe at the horrifying circumstances. Laugh? I mean, I guess it's not your mum, so it's a little bit weird. I just seen my best friend balls deep in my stepmother. Jeez, the poor dad. Well, hang on. So, your dad... (coughs) Your dad's first wife ran off with a 19-year-old, and his second wife fucked a 16-year-old. What kind of women is your dad attracting? Does he look nine? (laughs) Does he attract women that like young boys? He must be fucking nine years old in the face. What, what's your type? Oh, I really like women that would cheat on me with children. That's what I'm really into. That's my vibe. That's what I really like. Obviously, I told my dad what happened despite the bitch's firm protest, the stepmom's firm protest, and he immediately kicked my stepmom out, divorced her, and threatened to get her charged for statutory rape if she ever came back. I guess this is not Australia, because that's legal in Australia. Uh, If she ever came back. He also banned my friend from ever stepping foot in his house and constantly warns me about him. I mean, you can't say that one of them's a rapist and then also blame the victim. Do you get what I mean? It's one or the other. There wasn't the f- this wasn't the first time he had sex with her, and apparently they would have weekly sessions together when no one else was home, even resorting to having sex in my room. Fuck. Nowadays, I don't talk to my friend because every time I look at him, all I see is him railing my ex-stepmother, and that's not exactly something I want to picture. Somehow, through all of this, no one else knows about it, well, you and everyone else listens to the podcast do, but that's beside the point. Hope you enjoyed the story. And if not, I hope to send in another fuck story from my 15 years of life. Jeez, you've lived. You, I gotta say you've lived. I haven't had anything like that happen. I love your work and I can't wait to go to one of your shows. Have a shit one, Sarah. Fuck. That's crazy. I mean, but really it all worked out in the end, didn't it? Your poor dad. I really do feel for him. I hope you find someone that's into uh, adults. <laughs> or him <laughs> that'd be even better because if he finds someone who's into adults and still suck if he fucking cheated on him uh, thank you for the story Sarah that was enthralling fuck girls have the best stories I swear and you guys can all write something about being born with a vagina gives you the ability to create paragraphs in your fucking emails it's great um, 
Well, look, guys, I've got a few more emails, but nothing's going to top that, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for for listening and watching to the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, make sure you tune in next week and uh, stay tuned for fucking Thursday. I have a very, very big announcement. Um coming but wednesday the tour pre-sale opens so jump on loosespears.com slash gig list put your email and your city in you'll get an email when that opens with the password and you'll get to see the tour name the official tour poster and all that kind of shit you grab the merch that you want um and yeah you get tickets before anyone else i really 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 recommend that you get on the pre-sale because i know if you guys listen to the podcast you're probably the most hardcore fans and i want to make sure that you guys get the tickets first because all those you know lazy cunts who watch one video whatever fuck them you know what i mean so i want you guys to come so jump on the gig list make sure you're on there if you get access to the pre-sale you can book tickets for your friends so if you're bringing someone who doesn't know me that's cool they'll love the show i perform 95 percent of the gigs i do are to people who have no idea who i am and uh i'm fucking i'll say it i'm fucking great so uh if you if you got a friend that likes my style send them a video of my stand-up Or if you think they would like me, send them a video and be like, hey, do you want to come? Let's do it. I'll get the tickets. All right. See you guys next Sunday. Uh, Actually on time this time. And uh, can't wait to see you at the shows. Can't wait to see what you guys think on Thursday. And I can't wait to uh, fuck your stepmom. See you later. (laughs) Have a shit one.